Next, we have the monster egg group, which was a little difficult because it's probably one of the most diverse and large egg groups. Maybe second to field, because field is bigger. Nothing in here has anything in common scientifically in appearance. They don't have similar habitats. They don't have similar body shapes. They're just all monsters. But technically, all Pokemon are monsters. The Mon in Pokemon stands for monsters. That's common knowledge. And I'm afraid that the monster egg group is really a tricky one. Now, this video has gotten very long, but I'm going to try to speed things up. Basically, the monster egg group are all... How should I say this? Monstrous and beast-like. Every th aspect of the monster egg group is monstrous and beast-like. Basically, the inverse of the fairy egg group, except... There's some fairy egg group Pokemon that could be considered monstrous or beast-like, but look at this. There's no Pikachu on here. There's no Togedemaru on here. There's no... Skitty on here. Everything here is just, you know... Intimidating. Unnatural, compared to, like, real animals. So we'll just let the monster egg groups slide, because they're just monsters. And the last three egg groups are Water 1, Water 2, and Water 3. Some people don't know the difference between them, and neither did I, until I took a long study of them. The best that I can tell, the thing that Water 1, Water 2, and Water 3 have in common is that they can swim. Not every Pokemon in these three egg groups are water types. For example, in Water 1, we have Dratini, Dragonair, and Dragonite, which are not water types, to just to name a few. There may be others, like, let's see, Bidoof is not a water type. It evolves into one, though. Stunfisk is not a water type. Inky and Malamar are not water types. Dragalge is no longer a water type, but evolves from one. And, uh, well, those are just the Water 1 non-water types. The best that I can tell... Water 1, Water 2, and Water 3 are all Pokemon that can swim. The difference between the three groups is how much they swim, where they live, and their body shape. The things that Water 1 have in common is that they're all Pokemon that choose to leave water if they want. They are able to leave water. For example, Pukumuku, despite being healthier in the water and kind of at risk of dying outside the water, leaves it anyway. So it's in Water 1. All the other Pokemon are seen outside of water without ill side effects. Inke and Malamar, in fact, are never seen in water. Their bodies are aquatic in nature, and they are in the Water 1 and Water 2 groups. But they are mostly seen outside of water. Stunfisk is not a water type, but it does live in water, but leaves, leaves it as well. The Pokemon on this list that are both Water 1 and Water 2 are tricky because the Water 1 Pokemon leave water a lot, while the Water 2 Pokemon leave water little to never. Like, if you see a Pokemon in Water 2, which was I was getting to, they almost never leave water. But if it's both Water 1 and Water 2, well, it's either a Pokemon that leaves water if it chooses to, or a Pokemon that doesn't leave water because it doesn't choose to. I don't know why it has to be in both, but that's probably just to extend its breeding section. They in they intentionally gave some Pokemon Water 1 and Water 2 classification just to give them maximum gene pool. Because some Pokemon don't have a lot of options when it comes to breeding. So it's good to have a lot of options. There's plenty of fish in the sea. Speaking of fish, Water 1 are not the fishes. Everything on here is strange. Did you know that Delibird is Water 1 and Field? It's not flying. It's Water 1 and Field. Because it lives on land, and it also can swim. Like penguins. But it's technically... not supposed to swim because it's a... You know, I mean, sure, penguins can swim, and they live on land. Which is why, why it's Water 1 and Field, but, you know, they can also fly. But they're not the best flyers, so I guess that's why they're not flying. The Water 1 Pokemon are the most likely to be able to swim, but also not be limited to water. Because they're not fish or aquatic. Sure, most of these can be found in water, but they can also be found on land. Although some of them 
almost never leave the water, but most of them do. If we continue on to water two, this is the aquatic group. They are the most aquatic, the most fish-like in body shape, and the most likely to not leave water. You have your Goldines and your Magikarps and your Waylords and your, you know, Whiskash and your Wishiwashi and Bruxish. It's curious to note that Inke and Malamar, which are not water types, are both in Water 1 and Water 2, meaning that combination suggests that they live in water a lot. Now, the fact that they're Water 1 suggests that they can leave water, but the fact that they're in Water 2 suggests that they wouldn't leave water. Well, we already know that they do leave water and, in fact, are never in water. So that just goes to show you that every egg group has its anomalies, exceptions to the rule. Of course, Wellmore and Wellord are technically not fish, but these classifications don't exist in Pokemon. So saying something's a mammal or a fish actually has no scientific basis and no reasoning. They're all Pokemon, and if they're in water too, you make eggs. But mostly fish in here. Octillery is an octopus, so it's not fish-shaped, but it's in Water 2 and Water 1. So that explains how it can live in and out of water, just like everything else in here. It's curious to note that every water type or water egg group Pokemon can breathe in and out of water, without exception. None of them will die if taken out of water, and none of them will um, drown underwater. It's curious to think about that in terms of whales and f and fish because you would think a fish would die out of water and a whale would die in water because it, it does need air but let's just pretend that they all have lungs and gills while the pokemon that are not water types or water egg groups like pikachu for example would drown and finally water three the final egg group this group was tricky because they have aspects of both Water 1 and Water 2. Something else I forgot to mention. Pokemon can be in Water 1 or 2 or 3. If they're in two of these groups, it's going to be either 1 and 2 or 1 and 3. But there are no Pokemon known whatsoever that are both in 2 and 3. So no Pokemon are in Water 2 and Water 3. They combine 1 and 2 or 1 and 3, but not 2 and 3. Glad, glad we got that clear. The reason for this is um, because while the Water 2 Pokemon are the most aquatic, the best swimmers, and the most fish-like, the Water 3 are the least aquatic and the least fish-like, but do live in water as much as anyone else. You have your jellyfish, your shellfish, your oysters, your crabs, your starfish, some fossils, some coral, some more lobsters, some plants, some scorpions. Wait, what? We'll get back to that. <laughs> Turtles, birds, <laughs> we'll get back to them. More lobsters, more uh, barnacles, some crabs, and some crabs. There's basically aquatic Pokemon, most of them, that live in water, most of them, but tend to leave water a lot, most of them. Now, these make no sense. I guess I could say that Water 3 is where they just throw all the other ones that don't fit. Water 1 are Pokemon that can live in water, but choose to leave it if they want. Water 2 is Pokemon that live in water and almost never leave it because they don't want to. And Water 3 are Pokemon that some of them never leave water. Some of them leave water, but it harms them. Some of them leave water with no problems. But none of them are fishes. They're the least fish-like. The most fish-like are in Water 2, like Goldines and Magikarp. And these are the least fish-like because they're stuff like jellyfish, which, you know, aren't the fins and scales type of fish. They're the whatever family jellyfish belong to, you know. And then you got your crabs and your shellfish and your lobsters and your fossils and your, you know, turtles. Basically Pokemon that are not fish and leave water a lot. For example, Kerbaler and Kerbomnable, they're only in Water 3, meaning they used to live in water a long time ago, but they've left it because they don't live in water anymore. They live in the mountains. 
I'm sure Wimpod leaves the water a lot. Bar Barbarical leaves the water a lot. Argon and Archaeops? I don't know when they lived in the water. Those are fossil birds. I don't know why they're here. They are a big anomaly. Scorpion, Drapion, also. Scorpion, Drapion are just poison types that are very insect-like. I looked up online if scorpions can swim. The first answer I got was no, scorpions cannot swim. I kept looking because I had a hunch and I found out that some scorpions can swim and they can live underwater for between 7 hours and 2 days. I feel like whoever decided to put scorpion drapion in the water 3 egg group found that out too. So what do water 3 Pokemon have in common? Well, they're semi-aquatic, they live in water a lot, or not at all. Which doesn't mean anything because either you live in water or you don't. Or maybe you're semi-aquatic like the Water Ones. The Water Ones include Pokemon like Squirtle, which you find outside of water all the time. These Pokemon leave water all the time too. I mean Tentacle and Tentacruel wash up on beaches and dry up, which means technically they left the water, but technically they shouldn't have. In conclusion, I'm confused, you're confused, we're all confused. See if you can find stuff out, let me know if you want. Uh, please like and subscribe, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time.